goes. So up at the top of the page, what we're going to do in section 7.4 is we're going to talk about adding and subtracting our radicals. Okay. You already know how to do this. You already have all the skill set in order to in order to do this. So you already have all the skills in order to do this. So example one, this is your example. If I gave you this on a test, this is introductory algebra. You already know how to do this. 9x plus 5x. What's that's going, what's that going to be? 14x. Why can I combine those two things? Because they are what? Like terms, perfection. Great words. Those two things are like terms. So the same thing applies to radicals. You can add radicals that are like terms. So for instance, example two, I'm going to help you through this one, and then you're going to do the next one. If I have nine squared of three plus five squared of three, well, how many am I going to have? What's nine plus five? 14, and then it's going to be 14 square root of 3. You don't do anything under the radical. It's all about like terms. So don't add the don't add the numbers under the radical. Okay, so this value here does not change. It's all based on combining like terms. So go ahead and do exercise one. Combine those like terms for me, please. If I have 11 square root of 7 minus 15 square root of 7, what's that going to give me? Negative 4 what? Perfection. Great job, everybody. All right, same thing, exercise 2. Combine the like terms. All right, so in exercise two, the three square root of five, what can I combine this three square root of five with? The negative eight. So three minus eight is negative five square root of five. And then the four square root of two combines with the nine square root of two. So four and nine is perfection. Great, like terms. And so the only other thing here is, okay, when they're like terms, it's super straightforward. Sometimes we're given radicals that are not like terms at first glance, but we just spent some time in the previous section simplifying things like this. So our last few problems is just practicing what we did in the previous section. So I'm going to work through example three with you, and then you've got a few other examples that you're going to do. So with this first one, six squared of 24 plus eight squared of 54, those are not like terms. So before I give up on the problem, though, I know I can simplify those radicals. So here we go. I've got six. What's the number on the perfect square list that divides into 24? Okay, four. It's four times six. And then square root of 54. In fact, square root of 54 is one of the problems that we did. It was 27. No, I'm sorry. That was when we did the cube roots. So I'm, see, I'm using the wrong list. Sorry, buddy. What's the number on the perfect square list that goes into 54? It's not 36 and 3. That would give me 108. 9, perfect. 9 times 6. All right, so if you don't follow this next step, because I just for space sake, I'm not going to write everything down. But if I lose you, please let me know. That's not my intent. What's the square root of 4? Okay, square root of 4 is 2. What do you think I'm going to do with that 2 and the 6 that was already outside the radical? Yeah, I'm going to multiply them. So 6 times 2 now gives me 12 square root of 6. So if that's the case, when I simplify this next one, what's the number out in front of the radical going to be here? 
All right, 24. Where'd you get the 24 from? Explain it to everybody. Okay, what's the square root of nine? Three times the eight. Perfection. Well said. Okay, square root of nine is three times the eight is 24 square root of six. Are those like terms now? Yes, great. Sometimes they'll be like terms, sometimes they won't, or most of the time they will be in our class. 12 plus 24 is 36, square root of six, and I'm done with the problem. All right, try exercise three. It should work out nice and straightforward like the problem we just did. All right, well, let's see how you did here. Let's get any feedback that we need to uh, to improve on. So the first one, I've got five square root of 12. What's the perfect square factor of 12? Yes, indeed, four times three. And then minus three square root of 75. What's the perfect square factor of 75? 25 times three, well said. Okay. So in this first one, when I take the square root, what's my new coefficient gonna be on this one? 10. Square root of three. Does everyone see where that 10 came from? That's kind of the key bit right there. Square root of four is two times the five is 10. All right, minus, and then the square root of 25 is five. So five times three is 15. Square root of three. They turn out to be like terms, so that's very satisfying. 10 minus 15 is negative five. Square root of three. Exercise four is going to be the same thing, just has three terms instead of two, but should uh, should be pretty straightforward. If you need anything, raise your hand. I'll come to you. We'll uh, we'll we'll sort it out together.
All right, so let's do the arithmetic on this. If you got any question, anything that I'm not explaining well, please let me know so I can do better. So square root of 50, 50 is going to be 25 times two. I think we've seen that number before today. And then plus the square root of 18, 18 is nine times two. And then minus two, 98 is this the first time we've seen the number 98. What is the perfect square factor of 98? That's 49 times two, great. Calculator, don't, don't be shy with that calculator. So then we go through square root of 25 is five. And so then five times four is 20 square root of two. Okay, if you're having trouble coming up with that coefficient, let me know. That's the key part to this process. The square root of nine is three. And so that's just going to be three square root of two. And then square root of 49 is seven. So that's going to be 14 square root of two. And so 20 plus three is 23 minus 14 is nine square root of two. All right, just two more problems to get your questions in on this one. Exercise five, it's the same thing. You don't have to do anything with those X's. There's no power on the X, so don't let it distract you. You've got to simplify the 20, simplify the 45, and then add your like terms together. All right, the first radical, the 20, uh, that was the very first problem we did in the last section. That is four times five X. Again, there's nothing I can do with the X. There's no power on it uh, so that I can simplify that. So it's just gonna hang around and be, uh, be under the radical. And then the 45, 45 is again, a number we've worked with. In fact, there's not a whole lot of numbers to, on the, the perfect square list. I'm not gonna make them uh, huge numbers. So you're probably gonna see these numbers repeat themselves a lot. So 45 is nine times five X. Again, nothing I can do with the X. So it just stays under the radical. And just like we did last time, the square root of four is two. Two times the six that's already outside is 12. Square root of five X minus square root of nine is three. So that's three square root of five X and 12 minus three is nine, square root of five X. And that's simplified. Again, if you have a question, don't be shy, bring it up. Got one more problem, this is it for the day. Uh, exercise six, it's the same problem, this time with cubes. Okay, so if you are if you got your list of numbers, remember we're referring to the perfect cube list this time. So give that one a try. In fact, we did the cube root of 54. It's one of the problems we worked out on the, our previous section. So give you, I'll give you about a minute, minute and a half to, to make some progress on that. And then we'll, we'll finish that up. All right, for 54, when we did this earlier, what number on the perfect cube list went into 54? Yep, exactly, 27 times two. And then 16, what number on the perfect cube list is gonna go into 16? Eight. So when you take your test and you're going through this, just a little suggestion, uh, just because it releases a little stress, just do a, just write your list of perfect squares, perfect cubes, do a little brain dump, 
It gets your it gets your brain juices flowing. You'll be uh, it'll it'll help you on the test. So the cube root of twenty seven is three. So I have three cube root of two, and then the cube root of eight is two. So I have two cube root of two, and then those are now like terms. So three plus two is five cube root of two. All right, it was good to see all of you today. I hope you